new tip. Try. Abby is here. Andy is here. Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody this evening? Hey, guess what I heard? I heard that spring is on the way. Can I tell you how excited I am for this? So excited, like after mm, Thursday, I think is the last day that we might get some sketchy weather. Natalie is here. Hi, Natalie. I got to meet Natalie. Last week she came in to get her kit. I was here, we said hi. Happy St. Patrick's Day a day early. I've got all my gear on and my St. Patrick's Day leggings. So we are going to make, Kiara is here, hello Kiara, um, a woven bowl, just like this one, and a cup. Um, now, before we get to that, I'm going to try something I've never done before, and uh, I want to publish a poll to you. There is a way, excuse me while I stare at my computer screen, um, to put a poll, here we go, activate. So I don't know if this is doing anything, if you guys can see that. Oh look, it's right on my screen here, yes. Are you comfortable attending in-person youth events if attendance is limited? and social distance guidelines are in place. Kelsey and Penny have joined us as well. Um, are you seeing that? Can you click yes or no? Uh, I'm not sure if I have to end the poll or if it stays up for the whole time. Um, I've never done this before, but I wanted to ask what everyone thought about that, looking towards the future, you know, uh, what's published is published for 
March and April. So we are virtual until then. Um, we're trying to experiment with, um, you know, opening some things up now that the governor has lifted um, some of the restrictions and expanded on what is allowed. Um, is it going to stay up here for the whole thing? Hmm. I don't really know how to make it go away. Hmm. Or how I even get the results. All right, so I think, oh, I have a little X in the corner of my box that I could exit out so it's not in my view. Hi, Steven. So let me know if that's how it works for you. Okay, Andy says that she can see it. You can press the X on your screen too. Okay, good. So you can like get that out of your way then. So it's not like blocking my face. Okay, so answer the poll. Um, and uh, I'll see if I can figure out where all the answers to the poll go. <laughs> Otherwise, I may just be doing it a different way. Um, I'll do like a Google form and post the link. That's probably easier. I'm familiar with that. Anyway, let's get crack a lack in on um, our kit. Let's talk about what's inside. So we have our plate um, that we will need to cut. So grab a pair of scissors because um, we're going to make it look like this. And then you have a cup. Um, and we are going to cut it to make it look like this. You will need a pen or a marker or something to be able to write on the paper cup with so we can draw where we're going to cut the lines. You'll have this template, which is going to help us determine where we're going to draw the lines on the cup. And then you have two balls of yarn. Um, one is going to be smaller than the other. The smaller one should be the color changing yarn. And then the bigger one should be a solid unless you have this yarn, this like spotted blue yarn. This spotted blue yarn will act as your solid because it does not change colors from like one color to the next to the next. It's just like the same all the way through but it just happens to be like a couple colors spotted. So that's your solid color if you have that. And then um, if you're unsure, you can just like unroll and you'll see how your yarn changes, goes from one color to the next to the next. So we're gonna start with the plate um, and then move on to the cup. Anybody else joining us? Lexi and Anna, they catch the replay. Grace, I'm not sure if she said she was here. I kind of lost track. Okay, so let me push you guys back. Okay, so plate and scissors. We're going to cut. Each of these lines indicates where you, the line that you're going to cut on all the way to the circle that I drew. So you're going to cut from the edge on this line to the circle. Uh, on this line to the circle. You're going to cut little like pie slices that will come out just like that. So then you end up with these petals. Um, I had a lot of you sign up for this, so I apologize. I just couldn't do all of the prep work for you, but I figured you guys could manage cutting. It doesn't take long. So I'm just gonna continue to cut those lines. And if you cut on those lines, they are angled in to form a point once you reach the circle. Because I used a template and then I just traced them all on there. So you should end up with all of these little pizza wedges, pie slices, whatever you want to call them, coming out.
thank you guys so much for your interest. I'm so excited for the things to come. We've got a lot of kids signed up for the stuff coming up. Um, next week is Scribble Day. We're celebrating National Scribble Day. I was prepping the kits today. I posted a cute little picture of some of the things that are going in the kit. It's not too late to sign up for that. If you have not registered, that registration is still open for that. Um, so hop on to that. I got tons of kids for the pipe cleaner animals in April. I only have two spots left for that. I had to close it and then open it. And then I had to close it again, and then I opened it again because I had to keep reevaluating um, how many pipe cleaners I had, if I had enough to serve the amount of kids that were signing up. So you can see that I am just folding the tips of these petals up just a little bit. Take your time. I'm sure you're still cutting. We're going to start it to form the bowl. Now, this is how easy this is. You're going to take your ball of the color changing yarn. Remember, the bigger ball, the solid, is for the cup. That actually takes more yarn than the bowl. Because what I had to do was make it and then take it apart and then measure the yarn. So you've got 13 yards of yarn in this one and then the solid one that you have is 21 yards. That's why it's bigger. So you're taking the color changing yarn and you are going to just slip the end in one of those slits. Let's see. If I do it up here, maybe you could see it better. You're going to slip that in one of those slits all the way to the center, all the way down the bottom. So since our end is in the middle and our yarn is coming out the back, we're just going to go around the back of this first petal and then bring it in towards the center of the next slit. And then we go across this next petal and through the slit to the back across that next petal and into the slit towards the front. Can everybody see what I'm doing? And what you're doing is just weaving to the back of a petal, to the front of a petal, to the back of a petal, to the front of the petal. And you're going to work your way all the way around. Now I am back at the beginning where I started. But because there is an odd number of petals, your next move is to automatically go to the back. Now we're starting basically our second row because we've got to the beginning and we're going around again. And so it automatically alternates for us. When we were doing the weaving project in the, with the um, llama, you had to be very careful to go over, under, over, under. And when you got to the end and you turned around and you came back, you had to make sure you did the opposite. If you went under, you had to go over, right? This, you don't even have to worry about that. You don't have to keep track. You just constantly go forward, backwards, forward, backwards, forward, backwards. And you just keep going all the way around until you can't go any further. Now you want to pull it a little tight because the tightness is what's going to cause the petals to kind of pop up and start to form that bowl shape. So here I am just, you can see, I'm just going under one, over one, under one, and maybe my hand is in the way. Let's see if I could change the angle of this. Over, under, over, under. 
And what's really cool is with this yarn, you'll automatically get like stripes and different colors changing as you create the bowl, which I think is really neat. Don't worry about this end that's sticking out that we started with because we can just tuck that in later. It's not gonna come unraveled. We don't need to tie it to anyone, anything. You just want to make sure that you are putting each row on top of the previous row and it's going all the way down to the bottom like as far as it can go. And you're just going to keep doing that. Anybody having any issues, any trouble, chat me. Any questions, I will help you, walk you through it, show you a different angle, bring it more up close for you. Whatever I need to do to make sure that you're understanding the project. You can even, I was working flat, but you know, if it's easier for you to work in your hands, you could do that. I like the flat because I can just push down the pedal with my finger to go over it. It just automatically wants to go under it. And then I push down to go over. So I feel like it moves a little faster for me. But as it gets, the weaving gets taller, I won't be able to push the pedal down to the table so much. We good? Let me know if you have any questions. Let's see if I could do it this way for you guys. Over, under, over, under. Okay, so I am not going to finish this bowl with you because it will take some time. I want to show you how to cut the cup. So in a few minutes, we are going to put this project aside to start the cup. And then you could finish them in any order that you like because I don't need to finish the cup with you either. Once we get it cut, it's pretty much this same order, over, under, over, under. And once you have the hang of that, then there's nothing else left for me to do. Now, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm pulling tight enough. I want this bowl to form. So I'm gonna give it a little pull. Do you see my petals pop open or pop up when I do that? Watch, I pull it and it the petals pop up. I want to make sure that I'm getting that bowl shape. So I'm going to give it a little pull to make sure that yarn is tight. Did everyone get a chance to answer the poll? I did not have any results coming up on my screen, so I'm wondering if maybe I won't see it until the live is over. Or next week when we're together, I'll be posting a Google form. <laughs> but I saw that the option was available in Facebook Live, so I thought, hey, let's try something new. I like to learn new things. So do you guys, I guess, because you're always signing up to learn how to do new things with me. I'm so glad to have you here. I'm so thankful that everyone is still willing to join us virtually through this past year and still give me the opportunity to do fun things with you. I'm so thankful. Can't thank you guys enough. Okay, so now that the bowl is starting to form. The petals are staying up by themselves. I answered, but it's still up. There is no X. Mm. Okay, on my screen, 
um, I had to scroll over. The X was in the right hand, upper right hand corner of the poll. I'm sorry that it's stuck on your screen. Um, there's no like off button uh, for me on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna stop with it on the inside. How about that? So I could put my ball in there. And then pretty soon you're gonna have a nice little bowl that you can hold trinkets or, you know, whatever small things that you have. It could be a coin bowl if you'd like. Um, girls, you could use it for, you know, jewelry or hair ties or something like that. Okay, here's how we do the cup. So we're gonna turn the cup upside down onto our template. And what you wanna do is kind of center it. It's gonna lie in between those two rings. It's not gonna sit on a black line. It's gonna sit in between two black lines. And you just wanna center it and make sure that there's the same amount of space between the lip of the cup to the first black line, just to make sure that it's centered. And you're gonna take your marker or your pen or pencil, I'm not sure if a pencil would mark the cup all that well. And you're going to just draw a little line or a dot um, along the edge of the cup where that line is going from the outside of the circle in towards the center. Right, not one of the rings, it's like one of the edges of the pizza pie. So I'm gonna mark it all the way around. Now I can try and show this to you up close without like moving. So you can see there, I put it on the template and I all the way around that lip of my, yeah, all the way around the lip of my cup, I drew a little mark where the line is. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom of the cup. Now here's the tricky part. You wanna put it on the circle, the same way that we did the top, but you need to look at the marks that you just drew and make sure that they're kind of in line with the new marks that we're gonna draw. In other words, you don't want one of the marks that you just drew to end up in the middle of a pizza wedge. You want the edges to be on the edges. If they're not exact, it's okay. You're just gonna eyeball it. Um, and it should fit right in a black ring. It should fit there just right. It's just the right size. So just kind of eyeball it and make sure that the marks on your ring, the lip, the lip of your cup, is kind of in line with one of those lines that are on the side of the pizza wedge. And then we're gonna go and mark the bottom of the cup on the edges of those pizza wedges all the way around. And then we just connect the dots to cut. Did I get them all? I did. Any questions on that? Did everyone understand that? So now, if it's easier for you, you can take your marker and you can connect the dots. You can draw a line from the dot down to the mark that you drew, like this, so that you have a line to cut on. If you are confident in yourself and you can eyeball it, then you just go ahead and cut.
You're not going to be able to cut all the way down because your scissors aren't going to fit there. But that's okay. If it's um, a little off center, your lines will go a little sideways. Again, not that big of a deal. I never really thought about what it would look like if you cut like diagonal lines. That actually might be cool. hard. There we go. So I'll give you guys a minute to catch up if you're still drawing lines or cutting. If you are ready to move on, you can let me know just so I know how many people we have ready and waiting and how many people we have still working. Oh, we have another Abigail and an Emmy. I had like two Abigails in this class. In an upcoming one, I have four Abigails. Popular name. So as I said, Scribble Day is next week. Um, then we have the Sock Bunny at the end of the month. That is full. Uh, at the beginning of April, we have Smash This Journal. Um, that is in celebration of Library Week. Then we have Beginner's Coding. Pipe Cleaner Animals. As I said, that there's only two spots left for that. And then the Mini Fairy Garden at the end of April is full as well. So there's still time to register for some of the other things. How are we doing? Don't see anybody commenting yet. Really, this is the hard, hardest part of this project because then we are going to just leave it the same way that we did the bowl. We're going to start in between two pieces with our tail on the inside and weave around behind, in front, behind, in front, and it will automatically put it in the right spot because there is an odd number of petals on the cup. Good, Kelsey's doing good. That's what I like to hear. Everyone else's hands must be busy. Abby is ready. Oh, Penny and Kiara are ready. Andy is ready. Excellent. Okay. So you're going to take your solid piece, your solid ball of yarn. Mine just happens to not be solid because I accidentally cut an extra one of the color changing. So I just gave the mistake to myself and made sure all of you got the right kind. So I'm going to start with the end again. Any petal, two petals that you want to start in, you slip it down as far as it can go. You can shove your whole hand down in there to get it all the way to the bottom. 
All right, and same as last time, since we're already on the outside, we're gonna go to the inside and back out real quick because it's gonna be easier and pull it down. Push these down as far as they could go. All right, wrap around the outside. Gonna go into the next one and out. And we're gonna push that down. Again, and you can use your hands. Look at how I'm opening up the petals to kind of give you a little bit more room to get the yarn all the way down to the bottom without having to shove your hand in there to push it down. And now I'm back at the beginning again, but I don't have to think about whether I did the first row under or over. I could just keep going because it's going to automatically put it where I need it to go. So do you guys have any ideas as to what you might use these woven projects for? You know, the cup can be like a good pencil holder, I think, or your, your markers. This one, I didn't cut so well, and I have edges that are catching the yarn. I'm going to try and pull those off. It will look better as we continue to go. You just kind of want to tighten up the rows. Make sure that they're stacked on top of each other. Try and get it all the way down there. It's difficult in the beginning. But it's basically just the same thing as the bowl. You can even do this on um, a water bottle. If you have an empty water bottle, you can do it. Or an empty two liter bottle, that would and cut it in half. That would make a really big, like a tall bowl almost, instead of a cup. Um, you could do it with a plastic bottle, like or a plastic cup, I mean. I was afraid that the plastic might be too sharp for your fingers once you cut it. So I decided to just stick with paper. Since it's pretty sturdy, it's like cardboard. It's unfortunate that my yarn is the same color as my cup right now. Oh, it's turning to black soon though. And it will start to stand out a little bit. So who's back in school yet? Our district, we're in the Wyoming area district. We are going back hybrid starting the, 20, the week of the 22nd. So that's exciting. Is anyone else excited to be back in school or to start going back to school? Finally get back to some of the way things used to be. going to be like the first day of school all over again and I'm sure some people didn't even get to have a first day of school like our district was virtual from the very beginning 
some schools tried to go back. Andy's excited, she says. Good. Some kids never even got to like see their classroom or maybe you are changing buildings. You know, you attended the last grade in one building and now you're getting ready to move over to the other building. Like we have a kindergarten center and that's it. So these poor kindergartners never even got to see their school. And then, you know, they're out of that building and into the next building for first, second, and third. And then they leave that building and they go into another building for fourth, fifth, and sixth. And then you do your last move into the high school. That's how our district works for seventh through twelfth. So it would be exciting if you're like, you know, coming to the intermediate center for fourth grade. Kelsey's excited. She doesn't like virtual. It's not for everybody. You know, some people do really well with it. Some people, not so much. You know, it's not fun staring at a computer screen all day. I know that much. I mean, I have worked in on a computer since, you know, I graduated college. That was my job and I had to stare at a computer all day. And it is very exhausting on, on your eyes. It's mentally draining. Even though you're not like physically doing anything, you're constantly, you know, focused and it's just, it's, it takes a lot of brain power. So it is difficult. That's why I appreciate you guys being here with me. At least you don't have to stare at the screen so much. You know, you're working on a project, so you're busy looking at that, and then you can just glance up at me every once in a while. Andy likes virtual, but she still wants to get back into school. Yeah, and that's where, like, the hybrid comes in. You know, it gives you, like, a little taste of being back in school and seeing some friends again. You know, you realize who your friends are when you don't see them every day, who, who you talk to. And it's just so much better to have, you know, more friends to talk to when you're in school than just a couple here and there and not seeing them all that frequently. It will be nice to get back to some semblance of normalcy. Okay, so... You can see how my colors are changing. This is striping yarn. It's not just color changing like this one. It, this one, it changed colors frequently, a lot, fast, so it doesn't make stripes. This one, this yarn has, and you might have this for one of your bowls. This yarn gives you big long sections of one color and then switches to black and then gives you big long sections of another color. So you're, if you have this yarn on your bowl, this, that's how your bowl is going to turn out with st stripes like that. If you have just the regular color changing yarn, then it's going to be just all pretty colors like that. <clears throat> but this is basically it. This is all you have to do. When you get to the top of your cup, you just go as far as you can. Then you cut your yarn and you just tuck the edges in. I mean, you can barely see that end in there. So I'm not even worried about tucking it in. Once I get to the top, I, you could use a pencil or an ink pen or something long and skinny to just push that end behind or even inside um, under the weaving to hide it. And there you have it. So let me bring you up here just so I can say goodbye and post pictures. I cannot wait till we could do this again in person and I can see all your creativity come to life and not have to wait for pictures. I will see you again really soon. Enjoy the rest of your week 
and I'll talk to you later.